All right, dyeing our project. Now, right off the bat, there is no reason dyeing needs to be expensive, time consuming, or messy. You're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. But two big points here, because what we're looking for, just like everything else, ease and outcome. And this can be extremely easy with a gorgeous outcome. But two points we need to talk about are dye choice. And I'll be a little bit brief here. Won't go into great detail, but this is basically a leather dye. It's an alcohol carrier with a powder-based dye stuff. Now, it's great dye, but in my opinion, the colors are a little bit lifeless. Secondly, if I make multiple passes, that color's gonna get darker and darker and darker. And two, finally, rub off. That's a powder-based dye stuff. It's gonna leave a little powder on the outside of my project. Now, I can clean that off. I've got to be a bit meticulous about that. But if I clean it off, I don't run the risk of rub off. Number one rule in dye, we do not want our projects rubbing off, okay? Let's jump over to the only dye I use. This is a pro dye. Now, it's an alcohol carrier, but it's, a, it's an oil-based dye stuff and that makes all the difference in the world. First off, our colors, red, green, blue, and yellow are red, green, blue, and yellow. But secondly, it's not gonna make the leather stiff. I can add eight passes of, or eight coats, it's not gonna change the color. It's gonna be the same color I started with, okay? Application, that's where we're going with this. Because I'm using a pro dye, I don't worry about it making the leather stiff or my colors going dark, I can dip dye. Now, top end, airbrush. Best way to apply dye. I don't have an airbrush, so I'm going to dip dye. It's the only way I dye. And in fact, it's so easy, watch this. I'm not even gonna put gloves on. Got a little hook made out of bailing wire, coat hanger, and just a little swatch. Tupperware with some dye in it, lift it out, Tap it on the side to let that excess dye drain off. Set it aside and walk away. Literally walk away. That's all there is to it. And that, when it dries, it's gonna look just like this. That's a light brown pro dye. Looks just like it was dyed at the tannery. Nope, dyed right here. Now, if you're a beginner, I don't want you to have to jump out and buy a couple of quarts to dye. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply with a sponge, a good high density sponge. We're gonna have the same outcome. But here's the great thing about it, colors. Our pro dyes, we're gonna use a mix. Half mahogany, half light brown. One to one, it's gonna give us a gorgeous color. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and let's drop some dye on this blank. And now we're set. All right, one quick trick. I've got a plastic bag down. Now this will keep, this will protect my surface, but the biggest thing is I don't wanna dye on this because this gets very slick, dye can pull, it can be a real problem. So I'm gonna just drop some basic shipping paper. If I make a mess, wad it up, throw it away, not out any cost. But if I don't make a mess, simply fold this over and I can use it next time. Now, when we're sponge dyeing, what I wanna do is my first pass, I wanna get as much coverage on my belt without it dripping wet. I wanna get as much coverage on my first pass as I can. So let's get a dye good and full of uh, get a sponge full of dye here, and let's just run all the way down and back. Okay, nice. Now you notice I'm going to make maybe two, maybe three passes. Again, this is, this is the pro dye. I'm not going to worry about it pooling. All right, let's hit our edge. Now that some of the dye is out of, our, out of our sponge, let's hit our edge. It's nice and rounded, so easy to dye. And then we're going to come back. Our English point, good. Now on our back, same thing. Now you're gonna think, well, isn't that gonna rub off? Not with a pro dye, you'll see. All right, we've got that dyed, let's just make one more pass. Now we're making multiple passes here. First off, we're not worried about the dye going darker. But what I want is a very consistent dye all the way across, that's what that's gonna give us. So, on a dry day, I may give this maybe three, maybe four hours to dry. On say a humid day, Really, it's best maybe 10 or 12 hours or say overnight. So let's th let that sit right there, let it dry. We'll come back and add an antique. Now, before we jump over to antique, the belt's dry, ready to go, but antique can be an absolute mess. It's the one part of the process that can be. So what we wanna do is we're gonna add some tape to the back of our project or the back of the panel in the project, and this is just painter's tape. We don't need really good adhesive tape here, simply because the, the antique, it's more of a gel than a paint or a dye. So it's not really gonna wick. We just wanna keep that off the back of our belt, gonna make that look very clean 
and very professional. So there we go. Okay, now I'll tape all the way down, and when we get over there, I'll just trim off the ends, and we'll have no issue with that antique wrapping around on us. All right, our belt is dry. Look how consistent that is. Now, it's still a little bit flat. Our top coat is going to make this color pop. But before we go there, we're going to add an antique. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to sink down into my groove lines and the edges of my tooling. Make the belt look a little bit rustic, a little bit antique, but beautiful nonetheless. We're going to use a medium brown. I don't want to go too dark because this is going to darken the belt overall. So, let's take a dauber. It's about the only way to apply this because this will push the antique down into the areas I need it. So let's take a good bit, and I'm just going to rub that on. We'll get to our edges here in a little bit, but let's rub that on. Now I'm going to kind of rub across so it gets stuck in my groove lines. Now let's set that down, run our rag across it. Now I'm going in the direction I'm coming from. I don't want to rub in that direction. But already you can see, starting to sink down in there, starting to look great. Now, I'm going to work my way down the belt, just a small section at a time, wipe away from the direction I'm going. And there's the last, getting that worked right down into those groove lines. Now, I tell you what, this is absolutely the last stop for a rag in my shop. But notice that, that looks great. Now, it's darkened a little bit. One more thing we need to do, let's hit our edges. But with our tape back there, really not going to worry about it, but I do want to go with a little bit less antique on my dauber. So I'm going to work this down, and same as the front, as I work it down, I'm going to wipe it off, and let's just double check our front so we don't have any wrap around. Now remember too, anything I use in this video can be found at weaverleathercraft.com, but also too, you can look below for links that will take you straight to our website. Very nice. Well, that looks great. Let's give that maybe about an hour to dry. Then we'll come back, hit that with a top coat, and that will be gorgeous. All right, I've got my tape off the back of my belt. Look at that. Great. That's not going to rub off on anyone. All right, let's jump over to a finish. Now, this technically is not a sealant. It's going to finish. It will enrich in our dye color and give it a nice light matte gloss. Now, with the leather balm, and this is one of my favorites, no ventilation required. I want to go sparingly, but if I do, then the leather balm is not going to get down in my groove lines and my cuts. So I'm going to go a little bit heavy, but just like the antique, I'm going to work a small section, wipe away from the direction I'm heading, and I'm going to work my way down the entire belt. There we go, and our edges, we'll get our edges just like our antique. Now let's wipe that off. We've gotten this far without streaking. Let's don't streak now. All right, and the last bit on the end there. Now let's take a clean cotton cloth, and we're simply going to buff. And you're going to be amazed at the difference here. So let's buff our way down. In fact, we can already tell the difference. Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? My color is rich, and I've got a good gloss on that. And buff our way back. You know what? I could not be happier with that. All right, let's go over to our edge. We're just going to add a little leather balm down our edge to seal it. But we are going to have no issues with rub off. So same thing, let's buff that down. And now that we've slicked our edge, we've rounded it, that goes right on and I can feel that it's just as smooth as it can be. And coming back down, there we go. I've got that nice, smooth, slicked edge. Is that not gorgeous? And how easy it is to get it to this point. All right, follow me to chapter six. We're going to decorate this, then it's ready to assemble.